Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Minecraft Hardcore. Now in the previous episode we took down the mountain and we laid out the floor plan for our castle and it's going to be an absolutely massive build. But before we get to that we have two little spots down here that need our attention. Over here we've got a very ragged looking piece of land and up top here there is a bit of emptiness and I think this is the perfect opportunity to add two more houses to our village. Once that is done we will head up top here, we'll give this garden a little bit of love and then we will tackle the main event of today which is of course our mega castle build. So without any further ado let's get warmed up and add a few more houses to our beautiful village. Here we go! And the houses are complete and as you will see in the background we've also added a bit of foliage to the staircase and the platform at the back there. We've done a little bit of work on the cliff surrounding the house and all in all this is looking amazing. And we're off to a good start for today's episode. But there's still a ton of work to be done and before we can get building we still need to collect a few more resources. Now next on my list of materials to gather is some deep slate and of course some tough and both of those we can gather up at bedrock level. And while we're down there we can go poking around for a few diamonds as well. So in preparation of that I've decided to move my beacon down there to assist in the endeavor and I've marked out the exact spot where I need to dig down to bedrock in order to have an unobstructed view of the sky and that of course is right over here by this dirt pillar. So let's make our way down. And there we go, we've got a hole stretching all the way up to the sky and all we need to do now is mine out a few blocks in each direction and make a space big enough to place the base of our beacon. And here we go, beacon is in place, we can add some iron there to activate it, we'll give it haste and haste to and as I'm doing this I just remembered that a beacon has no real effect when you are mining deep slates. So I think all of this might have been for naught. But we've got our beacon down here, at least that will assist us a little bit when we encounter some tough and yeah, no, mining deep slate is still the same old nasty slow process that it has always been. But we're here, so let's make the most of it. And with our mining session completed, we have managed to gather just over a stack of diamonds and I'm gonna grab some of these because I want to make a few more netherite upgrade ingots and for that of course you need diamonds. Now I don't really have any netherite scraps at the moment, I need to go mining for some more ancient debris but before we can do that we're going to need some TNT and as you can hear we've got the creepers in the background doing their job providing me with some much needed gunpowder and we've managed to get seven netherite upgrade smithing templates out of these. And before we get building there's another thing that I have not done yet and I thought now is as good time as any. I have not yet added any armor trim to any of my armor pieces and I have some netherite leggings that's just begging for it. So sir may I please use your table? Yes? Let's get going. All right, we've got our netherite leggings, we've got a ward armor trim we're going to be using and we're going to use some redstone dust and that doesn't look too bad at all. I think I'll go with that and then let's see what I look like in my pimped out netherite leggings. And I really do like that. It's simple, it's elegant and it doesn't look half bad. But let's face it, that is enough procrastination, it is time to get down to business. And as you can see I've dug out a little chamber here where I've set up a temporary storage room and I've been carting up 
a load of materials. I've got shulker boxes full of stuff. I've got chests with tons and tons of stone and wood in them. And I think we're just about ready to get building. And we have pretty much everything we need for now. There's a few more items that I might be needing later on. But right now, ladies and gentlemen, it's time to get to work. And the first phase of our build is complete and this castle wall is looking absolutely fantastic. I'm loving how this is turning out and I think once we have the entire castle perched atop of the mountain, it is going to be brilliant. But first things first, we need some more materials and unfortunately this is not something I can easily gather up, which means I need to do some work, in particular I need to build a wool farm and for that I'm going to need some iron to make some hoppers and fortunately I've got an iron farm that can provide me with all the iron I could possibly require. Next up we're going to need some dispensers and to make dispensers you first have to make some bows and for bows I need a ton of string. Now I'm not going to go out at night chasing a bunch of spiders down. I've got a perfectly good mineshaft right here brimming with spider webs, and I'm going to just harvest those to get all the string that I need. And as you can see, there is quite an abundance of spider webs to be found in here. Unfortunately, there's also an abundance of hostile mobs down here, and I just realized I no longer have a shield. Now, I don't know how long I've been running around without one, but I think I better be careful and just get the string I need as quickly as possible. Let's just light up here to make the area a little bit safer. And there we go. And there's a zombie attacking me. Oh, ah, a little bit of damage, but nothing seriously. I really need to gather up the string, get out of here and fashion myself a shield. And I think I've collected all the string I need, which means I can get out of here while I'm still in one piece and head for the surface to make my wool farm. So let's get out of this hole and let's go make ourselves some dispensers. And there we go, 16 dispensers. That's all we need for our farm. And then of course we need a ton of wood to make some chests, to make some hoppers, and of course the chests we're going to be needing to store all the wool we harvest. And after a lot of deliberation and scouting quite a few sites, I have decided I'm going to be building this wool farm inside the castle itself. And seeing as my plan was always to have a bunch of farms inside the castle, this is absolutely the perfect spot for it. So first things first, let's put down some grass where we will be housing the sheep. Next we install the observer so it can pick up when the grass is actually being eaten by the sheep. And then we have the dispensers, which will shoot out the shears and snip the wool. Next up, a few chests that can collect said wool. And finally, we replicate the entire array on the other side as well. So we now have space for 16 sheep, which will give us all 16 colors of wool available in the game. And we're off to a great start. And before we build the pens to house the sheep, we're installing the collection system, a rail with a minecart hopper on top of it. And finally, we need one last ingredient, which is of course, the sheep. So let's go out and go find ourselves a few of those. 
And they are no beasts more hardy and wool-giving than the magnificent mountain sheep up here. So we're going to collect as many of these guys as we possibly can. We need 16 of them to get all 16 colors of wool. And I think these guys will be absolutely brilliant as a start for our wool farm. Now we've got quite a few sheep ready to go. So let's make our way down the mountain, careful as we possibly can, and get all these guys safely down and into our wool farm and we've even got a cow who's coming along for the trip and um yeah nothing happened nothing to see there we still have all the sheep that we started with nobody fell off the cliff and we're still making our way safely down the mountain no incidents to speak of so far but i think i'm going to move the wheat to my offhand because every time i stop to eat something or do anything else all of the sheep decide to scatter, but it's on my offhand. They will now follow me to the ends of the earth. And let's hope it's not the literal end of the earth and uh, nothing happening here. Let's get all of the sheep of which none have died safely down the mountain and into the wool farm. And as you can see, we have finally made it down and we have all three sheep still following us because that's all we had to start with three none of them died and we're going to breed up these guys so we can have enough to fill our farm and while we're doing that i will quickly dispose of this evidence over here and then we shall speak of it no more but despite all the trials and tribulations we finally have enough sheep to stock our farm so the last thing to do here is get all of the sheep into their places and dye them their various colors. And our wool farm is finally complete. We have one of every colored sheep in here ready to give us all the wool we could ever want. I'm just going to line it up with a few chiseled stone blocks at the top here. And then while we're waiting for the wool to pour in, we're going to start building the next phase of the castle, which is, of course, the inner part. And this is going to be another massive job. So let's get to it and let's build. And the main part of the castle is finally done and it is looking fantastic. We still need some wool. We haven't quite collected enough, but there's still plenty to be done while we're waiting for the wool to come in. As you can see, it is magnificent. I am very, very proud of what I've built here. However, there are still a few things that need to be built, such as the barracks over here. We need some place for the guards to stay and... Right here, we're going to build their barracks. And there we go. Like magic, we have the barracks. But that's not all we've been up to. If we take a look on this side, we also did a little bit of work on the stables. We also did a little bit of detailing, such as the grates on the front entrance and the main entrance to the castle. And we're still waiting for that wool. And not much progress, unfortunately. I think I'm going to have to dye a few extra sheep the colors I need just to get the wool a bit quicker. Because as you can see, we've still got a massive hole in the roof. But while we're waiting for the wool, we can get down to some landscaping. And this is the perfect time to 
do some gardening. And with our trees completed, we've added in a few peonies, some lilac and some rose bushes and the garden is looking absolutely fantastic. However, there's still something that is missing over here, namely a gazebo and we are going to be building that gazebo right here. And like magic, a gazebo has appeared, perfect for a cocktail party on the castle ground lawns. And it is looking brilliant up here. We even have a little fountain complete with a pond around it. We've got some lily pads. We've got some small drip leaf. And I think I'm just going to add a little bit of seagrass to the bottom. Just to make it seem a little bit more overgrown and established. So let's get in there. Let's get down some bone meal. Some tall grass will be fantastic. And I think the garden is just about done. And I really do love the way that this has turned out. As you can see, I've used a bunch of different leaves just to give the trees each a different color. And they are looking beautiful. I'm not too sure about that one over there. It seems to be a little bit in the way. I might cut it down at some stage. But for now, this garden is looking awesome. And unfortunately, we still don't have enough wool to finish off the castle. But we do have enough to build the flags. And I've built the massive one at the top here. And down there I've built two smaller pennants. And we'll take a quick look at them right now. It is looking beautiful. Two colorful pendants flapping in the wind. And then on top of the castle we have the big magnificent flag flying proudly in the wind. We've also added in one or two other towers that we might have missed during construction. But everything is a work in progress and I think progress is going really, really well. Last thing to do is install that floor up there. And finally, we have enough wool to complete the top floor. And I'm just doing a diagonal pattern with three different colors of wool. Some blue, some light blue and some cyan. And we're going to do this for this entire top section of floor, which would explain why we needed so much wool and why it took so long to collect. And I've completely screwed this up. Let's fix that. And finally, we are on the last stretch. One more row of cyan wool to go in here. And finally, ladies and gentlemen, the castle has been completed and I am extremely proud of it. And from a bird's eye view, we can see what we have created. It is looking absolutely spectacular. Never before have I attempted such a build and never before have I created something so vast. And during its construction, we also passed the thousand day mark. But that, unfortunately, ladies and gents, is all the time we have for today. I do hope you enjoyed the episode. Please leave a like if you did. And if you want to see some more, be sure to hit that subscribe button. But this is Fungosaurus Rex saying, until next time, beautiful people, stay awesome. Bye-bye.